Well, my throat is clear in a bit, so I thought I would give my first countdown video a go. This is the first countdown um, from all these stats in the database that I have gathered thus far. Um, fighter videos on blue screen backgrounds for retired fighters will continue um, after these top break uh, countdown lists have been done. Um, the first category we are looking at, okay, is the top 100 fighters in terms of the highest number of fights against top 10 rated fighters. Many were world champions who often are the same but sometimes different are now Hall of Fame fighters, um, which again can sometimes be different on some fighters' records. So this is a generalized one, okay? After this, um, top 100 fights against rated fighters, champions or Hall of Famers, uh, there will of course be a countdown that I have already got ready where we look at wins in this category. There's not only going to be the overall, there's going to be the win. So we'll go through them 10 at a time until the last 20, which we will count down. So when we look at the first 10, okay, in 100th place in the first top 100 is Alexis Arguello with 29 fights. Now, I won't keep saying against rated champions or all of famous. We've seen the slide intro, so basically what I will do is I will go through them. Um, but Alex Arguello is in 100th place. 99th place, okay, is modern Mexican multi multiweight champion uh, Marco Antonio Barrera. He also scored 29. And in 98th place, Marvin Hagler can only squeeze into 98th place. Hagler comes in also with 29. Now in 97th place, okay, is Ed Smith, okay, my gumboat. Um, in 97th place with a massive 30 fights under this criteria. And ahead of him in 96th place is is Rocky Kansas, okay, former lightweight, who also scored 30 fights against opponents under that criteria. 95th place is the great welterweight king, Jose Napoles. Um, he comes in with 30. And ahead of Jose Napoles in 94th place is Young Corbett the third, who scored 31. Just ahead of Young Corbett the third in 93rd place is the hitman Tommy Hearns, one of my favourite fighters growing up. Fantastic fighter he was. Tommy Hearns also, like Young Corbett the third, scored 31. Now in 92nd place, a fighter who no one on YouTube talks about virtually, um, is the Ghost of Joplin, the fantastic, quick-moving, great left jab um, of Jeff Clark, okay, the Ghost of Joplin, who scored a massive 32. And just ahead of Jeff Clark, finishing the first 10, like I say, once we get to 21, we'll go to an individual countdown to count down the top 20. But in 91st place, even hurt by the ratings, like Jeff Clark, like Kansas, Benny Leonard, the Ghetto Wizard, scores 32. Now, this is interesting because some fighters on this top 100 are massively hurt by the ratings. And just imagine how many fights they'd have if they weren't. But anyway, let's go on to the next bunch, 90 to 81. Now, in 90th place, we have tough puncher Lou Jenkins, who came in with 32. In 89th place, okay, we have Mexican modern great Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., who also scored 32. 88th place, we have Hall of Fame heavyweight from the era of Sam Langford, the murderous punching Sam McVeigh. And in 87th place, um, we have former light welterweight and lightweight king Carlos Ortiz, who also scored 32. Now, just pipping Carlos Ortiz, okay, coming in at 86th place, is the golden boy Oscar De La Hoya, who also scored 32 in this category. And in 85th place is the Boston Gob, former heavyweight champion and very underrated fighter, um, Jack Sharkey, who scored 33. Um, also, tying with Jack Sharkey, um, winning on the tie-break in 84th place is former light heavyweight champion Willie Pastrano, who also scored 33. Now, a few fighters next who were hurt by the ratings. Um, Leo Hook massively, but despite being hurt by the ratings, okay, Leo Hook still comes in at 83rd place with a massive 34 fights against men under this criteria. And just ahead of Leo Hook, okay, also with 34, is former light heavyweight champion and, of course, um, Harry Greb opponent, Mike Matigo also scores 34. Yeah, just let you guys know, my throat has now recovered. I've just been left with Qatar in my throat, which I'm trying to clear now. So it's really annoying, but I'll be back on full form soon. So in 81st place, close out this latest 10, going 90 to 81, is the great Black Murderers row fighter, Charlie Burley, who also scores 34. So there we go, 100 to 81 on this first top 100. I've actually got 10 of these videos ready already. Yeah, I am a machine. 
But anyway, let's go on to 80 to 71. And in 80th place, we have former welterweight champion and very underrated fighter, um, Jackie Fields, who scored 34. And just ahead of Jackie Fields on the tiebreak in 79th place is former middleweight Fred Apostoli, who also scores 34. Now, in 78th place, okay, a man who is said by many could win a middleweight title in any era, the excellent Jerome Jeffords, a.k.a. Jeff Smith, who scores massive 35, even though he's massively hurt by the absence of ratings in his time. 77th place is another Hall of Fame middleweight that is Theodore Tiger Flowers the deacon from Georgia who scores 35 and ahead of Tiger Flowers in 76th place okay is the Bobcat Bob Montgomery who also scores 35 now ahead of many of these fighters okay is a fighter who fought in the 1890s um, George Dixon okay um, the great lower weight fighter George Dixon who despite having no rated opponents for his entire career still scores a massive 36 in this category showing how many Hall of Famers and champions he fought and ahead of him, another fighter who had no opponents in the ratings virtually apart from a few. That is the Hall of Fame heavyweight from Langford's time. Great rival of McVeigh and Langford, Joe Jeanette, who scores 36. Another fighter hurt by the ratings was the little Hebrew A. Battelle, um, who came in at 73rd place with 36. And ahead of him was a fighter with a very, very tough resume. Um, former featherweight battling Battolino comes in at 72nd place with 36 fights against opponents under this criteria on this first top 100. And in 71st place, okay, is the executioner stroke the alien uh, modern middleweight and light heavyweight champion. Rated like 20 years at middleweight and light heavyweight. Incredible. Um, Bernard Hopkins, who came in with 36 so that is 100 to 71. Let us now jump um, onto 70 to 61. We are getting there slowly. So, 70th place, another fighter badly hurt by the ratings. It makes you wonder how well they'd have done had they had ratings. Um, in 70th place is the great heavyweight Black Panther, Harry Wills, who scores a massive 37. And just ahead of Harry Wills on the tie break in 69th place is former long-time lineal light heavyweight champion Gus Lesnovic, who also scores 37. And in 68th place is one of my favourite fighters to watch from the modern era. Great warrior he was, Evander the Real Deal Holyfield, who also scored 37. 67th place was former light heavyweight champion John Henry Lewis, who had 38 fights under this criteria. And just ahead of him, another um, top light heavyweight champion, former unified light heavyweight champion made over 10 defences, the excellent Roy Jones Jr. in 66th place, also with 38. In 65th place, we have former NBA middleweight champion Gorilla Jones, who comes in with a high 39. And ahead of him in 64th place, another fighter hurt badly by the ratings, light heavyweight and heavyweight contender Billy Misk, who scores also a massive 39. In 63rd place, we have the Hermica Hurricane, okay, the tough and hard Lou Ambers, who scored a massive 39. And in 62nd place, we have the first fighter to score 40 or above. That is the great featherweight puncher, Sandy Sadler, who comes in with 40 fights in 62nd place in this first top 100. And in 61st place, to close out this list, 70 to 61, is former three-time, in fact, the only three-time lineal lightweight champion in boxing history, um, former champion Jimmy Carter, who, like Sadler, also scores 40 um, fights under the criteria of this first top 100. So there is 100 to 61. Let us now jump on to 60 to 51. We are closing in on that top 20. So... 60th place, we have former light heavyweight champion Harold Johnson, who scores a massive 41. And ahead of him in 59th place, a fighter many people won't have heard of, um, the fantastic quick-handed fighter Sid Terris, former lightweight terror, who also scores 41. In 58th place, another fighter apocalyptically hurt by the ratings, but not in the countdown, really, um, the great Ted Kid Lewis, who scored 42. And in 57th place, another fighter hurt badly by the ratings, former lineal light heavyweight champion from 16 to 20, Battling Levinsky, who scores 42. In 56th place, we have 
the fighter who fought up many, many weight divisions, ending up at heavyweight, um, Young Stribling, who also scored 42. And in 55th place, beating Stribling on the tiebreak is Manos de Piedra, um, Roberto Duran, who also scored um, a massive 42 fights against men under the criteria of this countdown. In 54th place, we have the great Irish fighter, the great Jimmy McLarnin, a fighter who I rate... Uh, fight for fight as one of the best CVs in boxing history. He's in 54th place with 43. And ahead of Jimmy McLarnin in 53rd place, pipping in by one, is um, Canadian fighter Lou Bruillard, who comes in with 44. The final two spots, okay, going 60 to 51 in 52nd place with a massive 44. Many people would think at name and not realise how many top-rated fighters, champions and all of famous from his time he fought. But Carl Bobo Olsen comes in with a massive 44 fights against opponents under that criteria. And in 51st place, okay, from only 61 fights, we have Muhammad Ali, who from 61 fights, a massive, monumental 44 of those were either Hall of Famers, champions, or top 10 rated fighters. Of course, we have videos coming on top 10 rated fighters, ring champions, wins ring champions, top three, everything. So, let us go on to 50 to 41. And in 50th place, another fighter hurt by ratings is the great lightweight um, Sammy Mandel, who comes in with 45. We are closing in on the 50 mark. We are creeping up there to the 50 mark. In 49th place, we have um, welterweight and middleweight, underrated Hall of Famer Luis Rodriguez, of course, a great rival of Emil Griffith. He comes in at 45. And in 48th place is the dangerous body puncher Billy Patrol, who also comes in with a massive 46. And another fighter badly hurt by the ratings really badly hurt by the ratings but still top 50 out of 270 fighters is jack dylan um, who has 46 now ahead of jack dylan in 46 place is a dangerous black murderers row fighter a fighter i think is very underrated for his resume beat multiple all of famers the dangerous lloyd marshall who comes in at 47 and just pipping lloyd marshall on the tie break is um lou salica who also comes in at 47 the top four spots in this 10, okay, in 44th place, we have the underrated resume of Ken Overlin, Hall of Fame former middleweight champion who comes in at 48. And um, another underrated Hall of Fame middleweight champion in 43rd place is Teddy Yaroz, who also scores a massive 48. Neither of those men get any respect for anything from virtually anybody, uh, but they do from me. In 42nd place, we have the whirlwind and exciting Boat Jack, who comes in nearly 50 with a massive 48 fights against opponents under that criteria. And again, a fighter from sub-70 fights, okay, um, similar to Ali, the Brown Bomber Joe Lewis, comes in despite having a much shorter resume in fight number than many of these fighters below him, comes in with a massive 48 of those fights were against top 10 rated fighters, champions or Hall of Famers. My throat's still not fully recovered. I'll have a quick drink. Right, so let us go on to 40 to 31. Now we are about to break the 50 mark. In 40th place, just falling one shy of the 50 mark is Jack Kidberg, former light welterweight champion, who comes in with a massive 49. And in 39th place, another fighter very badly hurt by the ratings, but still with a very, very tough career, is Jacob Bartfield, a.k.a. Soldier Bartfield, who is the first fighter to hit the 50 or above club. 38th place, we have former Bantamweight, lineal Bantamweight King Panama Al Brown. He also comes in with 50. And in 37th place, we have underrated former middleweight champion Joey Giardello, who also comes in with 50. In 36th place, we have the Cuban Bonbon Kid Chocolate, who also scores 50. And in 35th place, okay, we have a very surprise entry to many people. 35th place, we have light heavyweight Al Gainer, who also scored 50. 50. In 34th place, we have former flyweight dazzler Frankie Gennaro coming in at 51. The Olympic gold medalist did well there, um, breaking the 50 barrier. And in 33rd place, another fighter badly hurt by the ratings, but still a massive, a massive 52 is Memphis Palmar, who fought so many champions and Hall of Famers, it is ridiculous. In 32nd place, we have the very underrated featherweight champion Luis Kid Kaplan, who also comes in over 50 with 53. And in 31st place, we have one of the underrated fighters of all time, who again, 
you know, like Memphis Paul Moore, has a list of champions and Hall of Famers that reads like a who's who of boxing history. That is the mighty Johnny Dundee, the Scotch Wop, who despite being terribly hurt by the ratings, still comes in with a massive 54. If ratings existed when these guys were fighting, their numbers would have been apocalyptic. Over 100, easy for many of them. So, let us go to 30 to 21. Now, in 30th place, we have the toy bulldog Mickey Walker, who comes in with 54. And in 29th place, we have the boxing marvel, the three-time welterweight lineal champion Jack Britton, who has a well over 300 fight resume. He has 55 fights, despite being terribly hurt by the ratings. In 28th place, we have the raging bull Jake LaMotta with 55. And in 27th place, we have former featherweight king, one of great defensive fighters, Willie Pep, on 56. In 26th place, we have former light heavyweight champion, Joey Maxim, also coming in on 56. And in 25th place, we have Charles Bud Taylor, the blonde terror of Terra Horte, coming in with 58. In 24th place, we have former lightweight king, Old Bones Joe Brown, who held the lightweight defence record prior to Duran beating it, coming in with 60. And in 23rd place, we have the Cuban hawk, Kid Gavilan, um, the lineal welterweight champion of the world, the successor to Robinson, um, after Robinson went to middleweight, also with 60. 22nd place, we have the Clutch. Sammy Angot, who scores an enormous 63. And in 21st place, we have the powerful, hard-punching lightweight king, Ike Williams, who comes in with a massive 64. So, people, there is the first numbers in my first countdown going 100 to 21. Ike Williams is in 21st place. Sammy Angot and Ike Williams just missing out on pipping into the top 20 on this first countdown. Like I say, I've got about 10 ready, um, a number of them, okay? They're going to start coming soon, after which I will start doing more fighter videos and then more general videos. But now what we are going to do, I thought for the top 20, and on smaller top 30 or top 40s, we'll do a top 10. Top 50s, we'll do a top 10. We are going to count down the top 20 individually, one at a time. So, in 20th place... In fights against rated fighters, champions, or Hall of Famers is the long-time lineal bantamweight champion and a fighter with a massive 20-plus world title fight record. The great bantamweight champion Manuel Ortiz, who, as you will see, scores highly in many of these countdowns. So ahead of Manuel Ortiz in 19th place is Black Murderer's Row fighter Jimmy Bivins. And just look at him on the left there and look how small he looks compared to the fighter he's fighting. He had to fight many big opponents in his career. But Jimmy Bivins scores a massive 68, nearly 70, um, coming in at 19th place from this first top 100. In 18th place is the three-division Six-time lineal, six-time undisputed world champion Emil Griffith, who also, like Jimmy Bivins, but beating him on the tie break, scores a massive 68 fights against rated fighters, champions, or Hall of Famers. Now, just pipping Emil Griffith into 17th place. Maybe a surprise entry to some, but not to me. We have the dangerous welterweight and middleweight contender Dave Shade, who almost breaks into 70, coming in with a massive 69. Now, Again, Dave Shade was hurt by the ratings, so imagine what that number may have been. So, let us go to um, number 16. And number 16 is the enormous, tough career um, of Fritz Zivic, who had a massive 71 fights against men under the criteria for this first countdown. Fritz Zivic, of course, ended Armstrong's um, record title reign and scored massively in this countdown. Ahead of Fritz Zivic in 15th place is... The dangerous contender, Wesley Ramey, who, albeit fighting a number of champions and all of famous, many, many top contenders never got that title. But Wesley Ramey does come in 15th place in my first top 100, showing how many of the top rated fighters he actually fought from his time. And in 14th place, we have another of boxing's great resume fighters, okay, the great Cincinnati Cobra, Ezard Charles, who has an absolutely staggering resume, full of names from great fighters from middle to heavy. Ezard Charles scores a massive 71. Now, just pipping Ezard Charles into 13th place, okay, is again the underrated resume of the great Black Murderers Row defensive fighter, Holman Williams. Um, Holman Williams just beats Ezard Charles by one to come in 13th place with an almighty 72 fights against opponents 
under the criteria for this first countdown. And in 12th place, another Black Murderers Row fighter, we are talking about Herbert Lewis Hardwick, the Coco Kid, who again pips Holman Williams this time by one to come in with an almighty 73 fights against men under that criteria. This guy fought from like Feather, Bantam, all the way to Light Heavy, incredible, and he scores massively in this first countdown. In 11th place, terribly hurt by the ratings, okay, is the Boston bone crusher Sam Langford, who despite being hurt by the ratings, still scores a massive 78. I always attest if ratings existed in his time, he'd have had at least 160. Um, but they didn't, so we have to keep it factual, okay. But Langford's in number 11. And in 10th place, okay, is the Pittsburgh windmill Harry Greb again, Badly hurt by the ratings, but still scoring, even despite being hurt by the ratings, an almighty 81 fights against opponents under criteria for this countdown. Harry Greb hits the top 10 running, and God knows what number his would have been. Ahead of Harry Greb in ninth place is homicide Hank Henry Armstrong, the first fighter and the only fighter to hold three divisions lineal titles at the same time time Henry Armstrong homicide Ant comes in with a massive 81 fights against opponents under the criteria for this countdown now ahead of Henry Armstrong in eighth place may be a surprise entry but the facts are what they are in number eight we have the featherweight and super featherweight big puncher Benny Bass uh, Benny Bass actually scores an almighty 82 fights against opponents under this criteria and many at top 10 are probably surprise entries to many Ahead of Benny Bass in 7th place will be another surprise entry to some, but not to me. The great Philly phantom Tommy Loughran comes 7th out of 270 fighters, scoring a massive 83 fights against rated fighters, champions or Hall of Famers. Tommy Loughran scores massively in this countdown and will score massively in many others. Ahead of Loughran in 6th place is the great featherweight and the great traveller Freddie Miller what a fantastic resume he has and how many of the top rated fighters of his time he fought Freddie Miller scores a massive 86 to come in sixth place now ahead of Freddie Miller okay is the three division five-time lineal champion Tony Canzaneri who has one of the most staggering resumes in boxing history Tony Canzaneri comes in an almighty fifth place um, scoring a massive 86 fights under this criteria now pipping Canzaneri out by one is many people's greatest okay in fourth place we have the great Sugar Ray Robinson who scores massively in many of these countdowns um, Sugar Ray Robinson comes in with an enormous 80 seven fights against men under that criteria more than double some modern fighters careers when they retire ahead of sugar ray robinson into the top three we go and in third place we have the old mongoose the great punching middleweight light heavyweight and heavyweight 10-year lineal light heavyweight champion the old mongoose archie moore who almost hits 90 but falls short coming in at a massive 89 so the top two, to people who follow my channel, won't be surprises, but people who don't, they will. In second place, okay, we have former flyweight who also fought up through some weights. Coming in with a massive 92 is the great Hall of Famer, Midji Walgast. That figure of 92 is enormous, and Walgast scores very highly, coming in at second place. But the number one trumps all, and the number one is still... 270 fighters in, the number one is still the great fighter Maxi Rosenblum, who I say has one of the most underrated resumes in boxing history, gets no credit from anyone except for people like myself and others who realise what an incredible career he had. He smashes all opposition in this category, coming in with an absolutely biblical amount of 146 so maxi rosenblum sits in first place on the top 100 i have top 30s 40s 50s and more top 100s ready more coming over coming days rosenblum pips the first one at number one i'm out